All right, praise the Lord, everybody. We uh, apologize for the delay here, but we are having to go a different route. And, uh, well, something's going on with the other device, but we thank God for another night to be back here in the house of the Lord and coming to worship God and to bless God. So we encourage you to come on in and join us, join us, join us uh, here on our broadcast, and we're looking forward to what God's going to do. Perhaps you can bring it up through OBS, but use it as a browse for Facebook. Um, and so we thank God for another day, another day that God is uh, using tonight, and we pray that God will touch your hearts and souls and minds of men and women, that he will have his way again in our lives today. And so we give God thanks today for all his goodness and his mercy. Uh, again, we, we are hoping and praying that you continue to see God's face, continue to call upon the name of the Lord, that he will have his way. Get in your lap. We know that God answers prayers. God answers and meets every need in every life, every heart, every soul of an individual today. And so, uh, again, we continue to look to God in prayer throughout our day. We're on these prayer. We're on these prayer. Our, our city, our land, all around this globe. We need God's touch more than ever this day and age. And so we will continue to uh, have, you, have you do that. And, and no doubt, uh, again, we know that God is the answer to our prayers today. Uh, we also want to remind you this Thursday morning, uh, excuse me, Sunday morning, Sunday morning, we'll be back here. Uh, we'll be back on broadcast uh, at the church. However, at 334 Asper Street, 334 Asper Street, we'll be at the church. And so you come on in and join us at 11 a.m. Uh, and so we're looking forward to what God's going to do uh, there. So we invite your friends and loved ones again. And so we're looking forward to a good time. It's nothing like joining, coming together, joining together. We're not now online here is nice, but it's nothing like being together and worship and fellowship together. And so we're looking forward to what God's going to do. Uh, tonight, we want to um, cover some cover a few verses here today that I was, uh, Lord dropped upon my heart today. We're going to come out of the book of Ephesians, the book of Ephesians chapter six. For me, for some of you, for me, for many. Perhaps there are Bible scholars out there that, again, know the word of God. And, and so we want to use Ephesians 6, uh, 10 through 17, Ephesians 6 through 10 through 17, and, and we'll uh, get rolling on that. The Bible tells us in verse uh, 10, uh, he tells us, finally, brethren, uh, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. He says that we put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against press and blood, but against principalities and powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. It goes on and says, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be, uh, may be able to stand in the evil day, having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having you on the breastplate of righteousness. In verse 15, he says, And your uh, feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, and above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked. And in verse 17, our last verse, he says, Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God which is the word of God. I want to use verse 11, use verse 11 as our main text tonight. It says, put on the whole armor of God. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And for a little bit, they want to use this, uh, it may be there in the title, maybe not, but it says using God's protection or use God's protection. Let us pray this evening. Heavenly Father, we thank you God for another night. We thank you God for your goodness. We thank you God for the opportunity to come and I uh, worship you and God receive of your word. And God, we ask you, Lord, to touch lives and souls of men and women, God, as we break forth your word. God, speak to hearts, God, and again, you will have your way in every life, every individual. Those that don't know you this name, we pray that they'll come to know you, God, through the power of salvation. God, and God, we ask you, Lord, to meet every need and God, accomplish your divine will that it will be done. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. 
Amen. God's divine protection. Now, again, before we get there, I, I want you to uh, uh, also share the page, share the page with your loved ones, your friends, and all uh, on your pages, and, and hit like and all the good things. Why again? Because we say it, it gives more men and women an opportunity to come hear the word of God, and with you doing that, it will help along the way. And also, again, we said we have some trouble with the program tonight, but uh, over there on YouTube and various places, you can share it. Uh, we, we'll post up the link later, and you can share it over there. Uh, no doubt with your loved ones there. So uh, be mindful of that. And also, before we get into the message here, uh, uh, also uh, we want to encourage you to give. So again, before we get going here, so I wanted to throw that in there before I forgot. But again, thank God for the divine protection. Divine protection or using protection. Using protection, but not just any kind of protection. It's God's protection. It's important, no doubt, in this day and age we live in it. We continue to pray, pray for our city, pray for our world. And as you uh, see what's happening all around and about us, you see everything that's taking place. And so we are in need of prayer like never before. In need of prayer for, again, revival. In need of prayer for divine protection. There are many that are dying. There are many that are, are, are sick and on and on and on with the virus and uh, all manners of trouble and turmoil in our world. And so one of the keys is, is to have divine protection again. And so we see the days ahead are very perilous, brothers and sisters tonight. They're very perilous, the Bible tells us. And, and it's imperative for us to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. It is so imperative, my friend, this evening. So as you do that, as you do that, serve God, live for God, walk with God today. Uh, we want to uh, continue to uh, encourage you to do that. Let's go. The Bible tells us here in verses, uh, throughout the verses, we see that, uh, again, uh, the protection is key. Protection is key. And, and no doubt, perhaps there were people that, that didn't realize, as, as I backtrack a little bit, there were people who probably didn't realize that, that, that they would die today. Uh, as you heard in the news, 3,100 people from the virus uh, again uh, uh, passed away uh, uh, throughout the day, uh, last night into the day. 3,100 people here in the United States. No doubt they probably had plans. They had plans to... Uh, planning for Christmas. They plan for other things in their lives. They plan for, again, uh, probably going to work next week. But you think about it, they are no longer here. And so we beseech you and encourage you and implore of you to give your life to Jesus Christ today. Today. Because tomorrow's not promised, brothers and sisters. There are many, no doubt, who was planning for 2020 and the things that were going to happen in 2020. But we see, again, these things are not promised. Tomorrow's not promised. But one thing is promised, death is that. And, and no doubt we will have to stand before God. And we ask you tonight, are you protecting through the power of salvation and through the plan of salvation today? Uh, uh, some never thought that their souls will be required today, but it was required today. 3,100 plus people today in the United States, their soul was required. And beyond that, just that's just COVID numbers, but so many die every day. People leave the earth and are entering to this earth, no doubt. And so we find the, the importance of knowing Christ because this life here is temporary, as you heard me say many times. But we must use the protection of God, the divine protection. And so throughout life and all of the things that we're seeing and all of the chaos that's going on in our world, uh, again, we find that God gives us something to survive. Say, how can I survive, preacher? How can I, uh, uh, again, make it through this world? Well, God gives us some things tonight that, again, will help you live your life. I remember years ago, uh, we uh, took a, what we call OSHA, a OSHA class, O-S-H-A. Some of you in construction, you know, perhaps on your job, you had to take an OSHA course. And OSHA, no doubt, it was, uh, again, a uh, safety training. You had to uh, they teach you the rights and the wrongs and things you should look out for on the construction site or things you should look out on your job, things that the regulations and all these different things they ran through for these OSHA trainings. And they told us everything that we were required to be saved but they our key is is not again they told us everything that we needed but it was up to us to apply it it was up to us to apply it and you know what in our lives today all that goes on all the things that transpire it is up to us to apply what God has given us yes God is a protector God is all these different things but you know what it's up to us to apply and so during, during that course they gave what they call PPE and as many of you hearing in the news they talk about PPP all the time PPE the PPE more PPE and it stands for personal 
uh, protection equipment, personal protection equipment. And you think about this, and so, uh, again, they want to be protective of the environment. They want to be protected from harm and danger. And on, 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 they told us that we got to put on hard hats and goggles and, and safety gear and, and steel-toed boots and gloves. Many of you know the story, those that work in construction. And, and we find that so this PPE, uh, again, it, it's so important. Again, and many times they showed us videos and all these different things before we get down to the crust of this thing. They would show us videos and say, ah, nothing will ever happen to me. Nothing will ever happen to me. I'm going to be okay. And then that's the one who ends up dying on the job site or gets severely hurt on the job site because he had that mindset of nothing will ever happen. Happen to me. Many would take shortcuts. Many again and miss some of the most important things. Again, uh, again thinking something won't happen, but that's the one. The very time they take a shortcut is the very time something happens. But I want to flip that around uh, again, spiritually speaking, concerning God's protection, God's divine protection today. Without God's divine protection, we are vulnerable to anything. We are vulnerable to anything. And uh, this day and age, you never know what may come, what may transpire. And again, the way our society is headed, we need God more than ever. Can I get a witness out there? We need God more than ever. And in your heart and your mind and your soul today, we need the Lord like never before. And, uh, again, and so we look at this today. We look at it. We look at it. We look at him. And you look at your heart and your soul and say, you know, I'm, I need God in my heart. I need God. I need to be saved. I need God going forward because the Bible says that the days are evil. Again, you think about it. We know, we know God overall is a divine protector. He's a divine protector. And, and he, the Bible refers to him as our shelter, refers to him as our fortress. He refers to him as our, our, our deliverer a shield, a buckler, a refuge, a horn, no doubt a high tower the Bible talks about. On and on and on, uh, the Bible covers an overall general uh, uh, covering of being that divine protector. But all these things God said he would be, uh, he said he will be, and he is today. But that being said, we must uh, again do some things, no doubt, that uh, uh, on a daily basis ourselves. Again, God is the overall protector, but we have to do our part, no doubt, to secure that divine, divine protection overall. And so uh, it gives us in Ephesians chapter 6, is our, our text here, the, 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 part, the armor of God. The armor of God, no doubt, that was written by the Apostle Paul here in Ephesians chapter 6, the last chapter of Ephesians. He left him with this. This is what he says in verse 10. He says, finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. The apostle was sending out last marching orders, if you please. He was sending out last marching orders to the church at Ephesus to tell them they must be strong. Again, one of the keys to protection of protecting yourself is strength tonight. No doubt whenever you say you want to take a self-defense course or you want to do all these different things, one thing they say is you must exercise and get strong. And so no doubt the Apostle Paul, again, uh, we, he refers to the spiritual strength. We need some spiritual strength in this day and age. He says, finally, brother, if when all else is said and done, if you don't get anything else, he says, you must be stronger. We need some strong believers today. Your faith needs to get stronger. Your relationship with God needs to get stronger today. He says to be strong in the Lord. The provide protection, no doubt comes from the strength of the Lord. And so we must glean and gain our strength from Almighty God. In Psalms 27, 1, the Bible says, the Lord is the strength of my life. The Lord is the strength of my life. On whom shall I be afraid? Again, and so you look at this tonight, the strength of our lives, the strength of your heart today. On whom shall I be afraid? And so our strength comes from above. Our strength comes from God, and that, no doubt, will help protect you from fear. It helps protect you from, uh, uh, again, the things that you may see, fearful sights. The Bible says he has not given us a spirit of fear. You know this verse. He says, but what? Power, love, and of a sound mind. Today, we must glean from the strength of Almighty God. So the Paul said today, be, be strong in the Lord. We're talking about using God's protection. Using God's protection. And so most fighters uh, have uh, some sort of strength. Most fighters have strength. You look at boxing and all these different things. They had to exercise to get stronger. Why? So they can knock their opponent out. But in the spiritual speaking, the Bible talks about a spiritual strength. 
in Zechariah 4, 6, Zechariah 4, 6 and 7, the Bible says, Then he said, and he answered unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel. He, again, you may have heard this verse before. He says, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord of hosts. This strength came from something above. This strength came from the power of the Holy Ghost. We talk about God's divine, uh, using God's protection today and using God's protection. No doubt, uh, one of the keys is enforcing and using, utilizing the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will help you. It will guide you. It protects you from a lot of things. Why? Because it leads you down paths that no doubt would have harmed you in prior, prior to the Holy Spirit living in you. And number seven, he says, who art thou, O mountain? Is what he told him. He says, the rabbi bow, for thou shalt become a place. And he says, and he shall uh, bring forth headstones, therefore, with shouting, crying, grace, grace. You think about this. He talked about, he said to the mountains, they can move out of the way. Why? Because, again, the power of God's strength living down on the inside. Again, you think about, but not only is Paul talking about the word grace here. And he, in Zechariah 4, 7, the Bible says his grace, his grace. Think about this. Grace, uh, we find divine protection. It's nothing but God's grace that we are saved tonight. It's nothing but God's grace that you're not consumed, the Bible tells us. It's nothing but God's love and his mercy, no doubt, that keeps us every day. We all should be destroyed today, but it was God's grace that kept us every day, and that's why he said, cry out grace, grace. It's not by your own strength. It's not by your own merits. It's not by our own power today is what he told us to remember, but it's by the spirit and the love of Almighty God today. The Holy Spirit gives us what we need. My friend, today going forward, you need the baptism of the Holy Ghost. If you've never been baptized in the Holy Ghost, you need to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. The Bible says in Acts, he says, well, be filled with the Holy Ghost, be endued with power from on high. No doubt this power from on high will keep you. It's vital in this day and age we're living in. Today, today, we're talking about God using God's protection. You need the Holy Ghost to, to God, and, and no doubt it will help protect you from all things seen and unseen. That's part of the divine package today. That's part of God's divine protection package is the Holy Spirit today. The Bible goes in verse 11. Let's go to, I'll be back in Ephesians 6, 11. Ephesians 6, 11. Maybe somebody can put that in the comments. Ephesians 6, 11. He says, but put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. We're talking about uh, God's, uh, use God's protection, using God's protection. And the Bible says today, and he instructed him to put it on. First and foremost, you must put it on. Back to what we said, yes, he is a shield. Yes, he is a, a defense. Yes, he is a refuge. But he instructs us in the New Testament, we have to do our part also. You must get up and put that armor on, brother and sister Dame. Yes, God will keep you, but you know what? You're going to have to do your part. And no doubt he says that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Are you listening tonight? He instructed him to put it on. He's not going to put it on for you either. You got to put it on. Amen. Every day you get up, put that helmet back on. Put it back on and no way you can sleep with it on. Do whatever you got to do. Put that armor on tonight. The Bible says we must do it. We must do it. Don't never leave out of your home without that armor on. Don't get out of bed without your armor on. Don't go throughout your day without the armor. No doubt today we find that again, he instructs us to put it on. We must do something, and that is to put on the armor of God. He says, we must, many will say we don't have uh, to do anything. That's what many say. We don't have to do anything. Oh, you have to do something. He says, put on the armor of God. Put it on. And he says, he says clearly, we must put on the armor of God every day. Put your war clothes on he wore clothes, he says, he, he, why? Because the armor of God also helps you guard your heart. You guard your heart by the armor of God. Tonight, tonight, guard your heart from the things that we find in our lives today. To guard your heart from the enemy. To guard your heart from the, from the enemy of uh, your soul today. Guard your heart from, again, what, again, the enemy's trying to do in your life. Guard it today from the lies of the devil this, this morning, this evening. Let's look at what it says here. Uh, again, uh, verses, again, we, uh, let's read it one more time. 
The Bible says in verse 11, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to do what? Stand. He didn't say that you may be able to lay down. He didn't say to give up. He didn't say no doubt to, to fall in and give me. He says, no, that you can stand. God's arm is to help you stand, to stand against the wiles of the devil, the tricks of him every day. Bible says he's like a roaring lion, roaring about, seeking who may devour him. You must use God's uh, divine protection today. Today you say again, how do I, how do I be successful? I keep going up and down, in and out. Well, put on the armor of God. I'm gonna give it to you right now. The Bible says, "For we wrestle not against flesh and blood," in verse twelve, but against principalities and against powers, against rulers of darkness, against in this world against spiritual wickedness in high places. Do not, re, uh, re, do not confuse people with the spiritual wickedness that drives people. Many times people confuse people. They confuse, again, this person right here is, is this or that and the other, but it's really the wrong spirit that they're driven by. The Bible says we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Christians shouldn't fight that type of fire. But we got to go into the war of the spiritual warfare. In the power of prayer, as we said earlier, the power of the Holy Spirit, the power of getting in tune with God, locking in on God and seeking God's fame. He said, that's the war that we fight tonight. He said, because it's against principalities. What are principalities? Definition of it means it's the state ruled by a prince. The state ruled by a prince is what principality means. And you see here tonight, and we think about the prince, the Bible refers to in Ephesians 2, 2, about the prince of the air, which is the devil. The prince of the air is all about and around us. And he goes about touching lives and hearts and souls. But he says today, we must go against the principalities. We speak against the wickedness. The Bible says the rulers of darkness. Yes, there are rulers of darkness as we see i gotta turn on the news and you'll see a bunch of rulers of darkness in the in our politicians in various places and on and on and on we pray for them. that's what the bible says pray for them because they're being used by the enemy many times many are corrupted out there and we find again today so the power of prayer by the church the power of prayer by the believers today we can pray and ask god to turn hearts and souls you say how do i pray for my politicians you pray that they get saved pray that they'll give their lives to christ Christ. And then, then, and only then will we see a real change in the lives of men and women. And more than just the politician, my friend, today, it's you and I down on the street level. You and I that walk up and down throughout the neighborhoods. We got to continue to reach out to men and women. We invite somebody to the house of the Lord. Invite somebody to the broadcast. Invite somebody today. Why? Because the principalities of the air are roaming to and fro. They are entering into men's hearts. They are trying to destroy men and women. It's the air is thick, brothers and sisters. There is a warfare going on. Many times people are so blinded by, again, they, what they see here. But there's a war going on in heaven as we speak right now. Good versus evil. The Bible says spiritual wickedness in high places. So high places, as we begin to see, clearly it tells us corruption is in high places. There are people that are making decisions, plotting and planning for your, your, your downfall and my downfall. And that's why we must have the whole armor of God. We must put on the whole armor. You must be ready again for the things. We don't know what the, game, the days ahead. You say, uh, well, 2020, well, 2020 could be even worse. We don't know. But we begin to say, you must have that armor. Put on the what God has given us. Take on the PPE, uh, uh, God's protection tonight. God's protection. We say, hey, we must put on the armor of God. We must walk in the spirit to protect you from the corruption and the spiritual wickedness. God gives us a protection equipment to survive. God gives you protection equipment to survive, friend. You say, preacher, I'm having a hard time. Well, put on the armor of God. It seems like I take two steps forward and the devil knocks me over my head. Well, put on the armor of God. Put it on tonight. He's going to fight even with the armor on, but it's a divine protection of where he can't enter into the heart. He's after the heart tonight. He's after your heart. He's after my heart. He's after the hearts of men tonight. And so it's so important for us to put on the armor of God. I'll get, I'll get to that in a minute. Listen to what it says in verse 13. It says, Wherefore, take on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. 
He said the whole armor is vital, not just a piece of it, not just the helmet, not just the shoulders uh, around your heart or whatever the case may be. You must put on from top head to toe, be covered. And tonight you can be covered, first of all, by the blood, then second of all, by the Holy Spirit and by the hand of God. You can be protected and covered. And third of all, by the power, of, uh, again, or the armor of God tonight. Don't try to live your life with just a few parts. Don't try to live your life with just a few parts. A part-time religion. Don't try to be a part-time Christian. I'm only a Christian on Sunday. No, no, you got to be a Christian 24-7. I remember when I joined the military. Uh, well, I was joining the military and the recruiter asked me. He saw I was kind of getting wishy-washy with it. I was about to sign that paper. I was getting to get wobbly a little bit. I said, you know, I don't know. He said, well, you know, you can join the reserves. And all you got to do is just come once a weekend, once uh, every once a month and on weekends only. And I begin to think about it. I say, you know what? I don't want to just be a weekend warrior, but I want to be a 20. I want to be full time. And no doubt as a result, I signed up to be full time, 24, seven, seven days a week, 365 days. We was on call. It wasn't just a weekend thing, but 24-7 in church today is not just a weekend thing. You must serve God Sunday to Saturday. You must serve him every day, 24 hours. You must guard your heart. Keep that armor on. Serve God. Live for God. Brothers and sisters today, because there is an attack, no doubt, for the, your soul. There's an attack upon the church. There's an attack upon your family. There's an attack. and You must have the armors of God. Tell your children to put on armor of God. Tell your neighbor to put on armor of God. We must put on the, what God has given us to protect protect us. No doubt we see arrows and things be shot our way to try to destroy us. He says, number 14, I'm going to try to wrap this up tonight. He says, stand therefore having your loins girded about with truth and having the breastplate of righteousness, the true protection. Uh, truth is protection. When you know the truth, the Bible says it'll make you free. The truth, no doubt, cannot be defeated. Jesus is truth. When you stand on truth, he is the Bible. The Bible says he is true and he is faithful. So no doubt, we thank God for the truth. Thank God for coming to the truth. My friend, today, stop believing the lies of the devil and come to the truth. It will protect you from a lot of heartache and pain. When you stop believing the word of God and stop trying to find fault with the word of God, stop believing it and taking it at his word. Stop trying to find holes in the word of God and simply believe it. No doubt, again in the day, it will keep you from a lot of harm and day. You see, the devil wants you to find fault with the Bible. He wants you to find fault with God. Why? Because he knows if you begin to have gaps into your spiritual walk with God, he knows that again here that he, he has a place where he can crack it, enter into the cracks. Today, build your life upon truth. It never fails. I mean, know that today, truth never fails. He says, gird your loins, your inward parts. Stand on truth tonight. And having the breastplate of righteousness to guard your heart, say, God, the breastplate was there to cover the heart and the vital organs. God just let me, I just want to try to do my best to do right. And you can guard your heart from that. It's vital. Today, when you take off that breastplate, no doubt you are opening yourself up to wrong. That's why it says, put it on, keep it on. God, help me keep my mind right, my heart right, my thought pattern right. That, that breastplate is there to keep you, 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 keep you on the right path so, the, so you can have the right spirit down on the inside. Many times the enemy will try to enter in, but if you got the guard, guard in your heart and the vital things of your life, your prayer life, then also here's the lungs. Why? Because that's that prayer life. That's a communication line. If he can puncture the lung, he can puncture your prayer life. Don't let him puncture anything in your heart tonight. God, you use that protection by the, the, by the breastplate of righteousness today. Say, God, I just want to live right and do what you want me to do. True protection never fails. God's breastplate was the mind of a man. And there were several cases in the Old Testament where, again, the enemy was fighting it, and somehow, some way, the arrows would pierce the king and no doubt uh, in battle. There was a little space in there when it, where it would pierce the heart or it would pierce the king because he didn't have the armor. He was, uh, cases where there were wicked kings out there there are two cases that I know of right offhand there where the king was pierced and he was killed because, again, his armor was empty, uh, 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 partially exposed. In verse 15, he goes on and says, In your feet, child, with the preparation of the gospel of peace. We must walk in the word of God. Boots, no doubt, your feet are very important. 
I remember being in the military, they told us, they said, you got to take care of your feet. When your feet get wet, no doubt, again, everything, when your feet get cold out there in the mud and in the, in the freezing ice, no doubt your feet are critical. And the Bible says in Ephesians 6, 15, he says, your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel. We must walk in the word of God. Walk in, and the Bible says, the, let your steps be ordered by the Lord. The, the steps of a good man shall be ordered by the Lord. And that's why he said, order my steps, God, in your word. Let your word be a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path today, and he will prepare you every day. When you get up in the morning, uh, read a few verses of scripture. Throughout your day, read a few verses of scripture. Guide me, show me the way. And he says, let your feet be... Uh, 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 Show with the preparation of the gospel of peace. It will give you peace beyond all understanding. It will give you peace in the midst of a storm. When you know God's word, it will protect you from fear and harm and danger from things that you may encounter when you stand on the word of God. Even when you're standing face to face with the devil, the Bible says he told Satan, get thee hence. It is written in the word. Get thee hence today. And so in the word of God, it will prepare you and it prepares you for battle and it keeps you there where you can go and walk no doubt. Out in, in the way that you should go today. The Bible says we must walk in his word and it gives you peace in the midst of it all. Why? Because you can stand on and say, you know what? What I'm going through right now, I read this already. I read how that again when the storm was raging all around and about me, God said, peace be still. I already read that. So right now the storm, the storm will pass. This too shall pass. I read, no doubt, when they didn't have anything and how the God would always provide. Right now, you may be facing a drought in your life. You may be facing a hardship in your life. Today, it's already written in the Word, and so, no doubt, you can stand on God's Word. And you say, you know what? I read where Jesus fed them. I read where the Lord provided. I read where God protected. I read where God healed them. Today, in your heart and your soul, walk in the Word of God. And this will protect you from fear and harm and danger on many occasions. 16, he goes on, Ephesians 6, 16, he says, and above all, taking the shield of faith, the shield of faith, where you shall be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked. Every day, the enemy's throwing things at you. Every day, he throws it at all of us. Can you imagine him having a bow and arrow just taking it and shooting it? The Bible tells you today, he says, the shield of faith will block a lot of things. You got to walk by faith to block out a lot of things that going on in your life. Take the shield of faith to block out doubt, to block out fear, to block out unbelief, to block out things that you may see. Block it out in your heart and your soul. Uh, again, even when temptations come, you can use the shield of faith to block it out. On and on and on, he says, to quench the fiery darts of the wicked, to block out these things that no doubt, when the devil says he can't say, no, I can't through Christ. Why? Because again, you God has equipped us with everything we need to succeed and protect you from things that, again, here today, that the enemy says cannot happen in your life. We're talking about using the protection. Using God's protection so the shield is there to protect you. You got to use it. Use that shield of faith. I saw a thing the other day. I posted up on the church page about how he said, where I am right now, a bridge, he said a bridge is, is something that, uh, again, is, is an avenue or that, that thing used as faith to take me from where I am to where I'm going. So faith is that bridge. Faith is that bridge that would carry you. He says the faith, uh, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. He says, and again, without faith, it's impossible to flee, please the Lord. He says, and he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And so we find again today, God through his word and through the power of faith, that one of the equipments that God gives us, the shield of faith, you will be able to overcome in your life. As I finish tonight, in verse 7, in the last one, he says, take on the helmet of salvation. Two more, the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. The sword of the spirit. The helmet of salvation. If anything else, anything else, guard this thing up here. The heart of a man. The heart of a man, your soul, your being. And again, you think about it, you know, now it's more of a law now. Where not, not, it's kind of loose, it's loose law to where, again, you go riding motorcycles or you ride the kids, ride bikes. They want you to put on a helmet. Why? Because once the brain goes, again, a, day, a, a lot, a lot goes along with that. The brain is critical. 
And no doubt, again, it's why I believe it's why he used the, the helmet as a as a key. Uh, you think about it in sports, uh, again, they use in baseball, they wear helmets. Uh, again, in football, they wear helmets. Again, in construction, we wear helmets. Why? Because, again, it's critical. If the brain is, is scrambled, no doubt, again, the body will dysfunction. And today, church, that's why he says, take on salvation, the helmet of salvation. And when you don't have salvation, your brain is dysfunctional. You will take blow after blow after blow to your life. Church, today, but the divine protection of God and the helmet of salvation, <clears throat> it keeps you from a lot of harm and danger. Yes, things happen to believers, but you know what? At the end of the day, we are protected and we will have eternal life through Christ Jesus, through the plan of salvation. I'm being grateful for that tonight. The plan of salvation and the gift, no doubt, put that helmet of salvation on. How do I obtain of salvation? It's through Jesus Christ and I. What he did on the cross for you and I. He gave his life. He bled and he died. And no doubt, he was crucified. He put in the grave and they rose and he, God, the Heavenly Father, rose from the grave on the third day. And today, if you will believe and give your life to him, through the born again experience, you can be saved, my friend, today. Give your life to him today. Give your life to him, the helmet of salvation, to protect you. Again, today, your soul, your soul is vital. You can lose a leg. You can lose an arm. You can lose a hand. You can lose an eye. But if you lose that soul, that brain, and that mind, the mind, the soul of a man, you've lost it all. Bible says, what shall it profit a man to gain the whole world but to lose his soul? Tonight, God has given us everything we need to guard the soul, to guard you in this old corrupt world, this wicked world we live in, that will soon pass away. How do I, how do I get protected from the passing away and the, the destruction that we hear about? Uh, again, in Revelation, you hear about all these things we've been covering in the Bible study. How do I get protected by that? By giving your life to Jesus. You could be protected by his divine plan of salvation. So he says, take on the helmet of salvation. You can't be saved. It keeps you out of a lot of trouble. It keeps you out of a lot of heartache and headache. How's that? It keeps you out of a lot. So he says, put on the helmet of salvation. It keeps you out of a lot of headaches and a lot of heartaches. No doubt if you look back over your life, you know what? If I would have came to Christ earlier, I could have a whole lot less heartaches. I would have had a whole lot less pains and sufferings if I just came to Christ earlier. And many, I'm afraid, will delay. Don't delay tonight. Don't delay. God's protection is right there for you. The Bible tells you it's in the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Tonight, we simply just gave you the Word of God. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 17. There's more to it, but we're going to stop. Again, the Word of God, which is the sword of the Spirit. That's our defense. You can combat your enemy. You can combat your feelings. You can combat the, the, the circumstance through, by the power of the word of God, which is Christ Jesus. Again, the sword of the spirit is a spirit. When you speak that thing, a spirit is released. The word of God is released into the atmosphere. You can begin to boldly proclaim Jesus. The Bible says demons flee at that name. Jesus. You can boldly claim the power of God. And no doubt, again, and the word of God and demons and, and sickness and disease and sin, or whatever it may be, has to leave because of the mighty word of God. The devil hates the word of God. He knows the word of God and he does not want you and I to have the word of God. Why? Because when we have the word of God, again, it's our defense. It's our, our, our thing that helps us along the way. Take these things that God has given us. Use the divine protection of God. We're talking about using God's protection, the protection that God gives us and I And church today, collect it, take it and put it on. And the key is back to what we said in the beginning. You must put it on. God has laid it out to us. We must make that decision. I'm going to wear this thing, and I'm not going to take it off. Don't take it off. Just strap it up tight. Lock it in. And no doubt, and you can win when you do that. you are getting today. The battle can be won. The Bible tells us as we close. He says we've been made more than conquerors, more than conquerors in this world. Oh, more than that. No doubt, through Christ Jesus, our Lord, today you can conquer, you can overcome. And go win the battle of life. Go win the battle against the enemy. Go win the battle, whatever you face tonight, through the power of the armor of God. God bless our prayer. We look forward to seeing you this Sunday morning. Come, come be with us this Sunday morning. Uh, join us online. Whatever you got to do, come be with us. And continue to pray with us for our city and our land. 
all that's going on in our society today. Pray, pray, pray. Again, we see various things that transpire. We see, again, the devil's hands is, is moving again. So no doubt the church, the believer in Christ, we have to pray. And we go to battle in the spirit. Go to battle in whatever challenge you may face. Remember, it's a warfare. And you must pray. Pray your way through. Fight your way through. Again, today, till you see victory won in your life. We have victory in Jesus Christ. There is victory. And today, you want victory. Give your life to him tonight. And as we dismiss in prayer tonight, we're going to go before the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, tonight for your word, God. We thank you, God, for the armor of God. We thank you, God, for all that you've provided. And God, we pray to each one. Take heed and begin to take on the armor of God. They would take heed and begin to apply these things in their lives and not just let it sit on the wayside, but God, to put it on and apply it to our lives. We pray again today that that one does not know you, they will give their lives to you tonight. God, they will make their decision. They're tired of the heartaches. They're tired of, again, the battles. They're tired of, again, uh, again the circumstance. Tonight, we pray that you help them, God, to make that decision to come to you tonight. God, those that, again, are struggling to go back and forth, help them, God. Put on the armor of God and make once and for all, God, to serve you and lift for you, God, we pray. God, we pray for those that are sick of this virus. We pray for those in our land today. You'll send healing to them. Uh, again, and perhaps on the deathbed tonight, we pray, whoever it may be, to look to you tonight. We pray that our nation will realize we need you more than ever, God. We we have to realize this is a spiritual war. This is a spiritual, uh, again, battle that we're facing right now. And God, I pray that men and women will open their eyes and see that God, the, the reality of God and the need, the most important need of God that we have right now. God, we pray continue to bless the church, bless the members, God, and those again here today that have been attending. And God, we pray and ask, Lord, you will help them, God, and get in this warfare. Continue to stay on the battlefield and live for you and walk in victory. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen. Again, as we uh, as we close, I didn't, I didn't really cover it, but I'm going to say it again. If you'd like to support the work of the Lord, if you'd like to support the work of the Lord, uh, you, you're welcome to give to the church there. And again, uh, through our website at www.myntcc.org. And also, also again, through our text to give at 347-229-9933. And those on YouTube who haven't posted up on YouTube, he's having technical difficulties earlier. But those on YouTube, no doubt, uh, again, hit subscribe, hit like. If you're watching on your Facebook, jump over to YouTube, subscribe to the channel. And again, let the Lord bless you in a mighty way. We also have podcasts. Come back and listen to the podcast. We have it on various platforms, TuneIn Radio, uh, iHeartRadio, uh, Apple, again, Google Play, all these different things that are out there. Some kind of way you can find the podcast out there. We have it on many platforms. So search the church name. Search the church name. Or you make a search for my name, Pastor M.O. Woodlock. You'll find it there. All right? God bless you. Have a wonderful evening. Amen. I mean, the Lord bless you as I pray.